Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not very alert today after staying up very late last night watching Oklahoma State University devastate Arizona in the final four. Um, Senator is out of order. Next. <laughs> Uh, the chairman brought up the, the, some of the problems in Libya, and I was glad that uh, Senator Gillibrand talked about some of the sub-Saharan Ac Africa problems that with uh, Boko Haram in, in uh, Nigeria and, uh, and um, in Al-Shabaab and uh, Somalia. My concern is this. When AFRICOM was set up, AFRICOM was not, he wasn't really dedicated the resources that other commands are. You're dependent upon. CENTCOM, UCOM, and others in order to take care of the problems you had. Now, with all of these uh, things coming up now that we didn't anticipate, how are you handling that part? I mean, you're going to be, how are you handling your resources, your manpower? Senator, if confirmed, I think one of my big responsibilities is to evaluate situations such as in Nigeria, in Boko Haram, where we are with Al Shabaab, what's going on with AQIM in Mali, is to evaluate those situations and then advocate for the resources necessary to uh, contribute to whatever the mission may be for them. As I, as I said, AFRICOM is an economy of force effort, but it's my job to advocate when I, when I have a clear yeah, You can advocate all you want, but uh, the, we, the resources are not there as we have and as it, we've learned to expect in the past. That's the big problem that we have uh, with this happening all over the world. And my question, I guess, is have you found there's enough left over for you when you do advocate for them? Well, if confirmed, and I'll have to look into what, is, what we still have to do. We have some shortages in, in ISR. We have okay. some shortages in, in personal recovery aircraft and the like because of the size of the continent. So I know those two are definite uh, places where we need okay. to go. As I mentioned to you before, one of the two of the things I think are very successful in Africa are, number one, the train and equip program, and number two, IMET program. And now we're looking in the future when we look, talk about the IMET program, anticipating that if we don't do it, we know who is going to be doing it. And so are they still going along, those two programs, in spite of the competition that's uh, out there? It's my understanding that those, the programs you mentioned, along with others, such as the 1208 program, are going, are going, are going well. Yeah, thank you. Um, General Lingo, the concern that we have, and we've heard it in this, uh, in this uh, we've had several hearings talking about the, the active uh, Air Force. Uh, during the readiness hearing in March, they talked about the Manning shortfalls in the critical career field, including uh, Air Force pilots. Um, the fact that we're currently over 640 pilots short of, of their requirement. Now, we're talking about active now. And, and all these things that they're, that they're talking about, they cost some $9 million, we determined, to take someone off the street and train them to the um, F-22 level. Uh, while we're talking about retention bonuses around $225,000. Now, these are serious problems with active. How, how do you rank these uh, with the reserve component? Well, Senator, uh, it, it's, it's cyclical. When airlines begin to hire, it, it begins to be more difficult to, to retain pilots. Um, the good news for the National Guard is you can be an airline pilot and a uh, pilot in, in the unit. So um, what's important for us is to watch and maintain the frequency and the predictability of our rotational uh, deployments. Um, and, it, and if we do that, um, you know, we're going to be able to, to be just fine. We, it's, it is a problem. It, it's particularly a problem in our full-time force to retain the full-time um, uh, instructor pilot cadres is, is challenging for us, but um, it's something that we have to work on constantly. And, and yeah, what percentage of your pilots are uh, come from active? Sir, if I told you, I'd be guessing. I mean, I, I'm guessing probably half, maybe maybe a little more than that. I was a former active duty pilot myself. Uh, a lot of pilots come from the active component when they transition to um, the commercial airlines and, and then follow on with the... And I know. see that as a problem, too, because... Uh, in the, that exacerbates the problem of the of the active units. So, well, that's something that we're we're very much concerned about. The the uh, last thing I uh, wanted to mention was the uh, the activity in uh, of the Chinese in in Africa, General um, uh, Waldhauser. You know, they, we, we, we have observed for a long period of time what China is doing there. They come in, they do huge, they're even talking about that long railroad project that goes all the way from south to north 
But when they do this, they don't hire Africans. They're bringing their own people uh, in. And uh, it, it appears to me, from my activity down there, that they are, um, the saying in Africa is that the United States tells them what they need and then China gives them what they need. But they're not doing this out of the kindness of their heart. Do you see that uh, threat continuing as it has in the last uh, 10 years that I know of? Senator, I do. China's uh, interests are markets and minerals. And they do, you know, we hire uh, locals, for example, in Djibouti at the, our facility there, we hire uh, Djiboutians, uh, but the Chinese do not. Yep, that's correct. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.